Welcome to coverage of live high school football, powered by KX Sports on the Dakota CW. Welcome in to the Magic City. Minot High, the setting for our big time rivalry game between the Minot Magicians and the Williston Coyotes as they get renewed again here as kickoff is right away. Tristan, your thoughts right before kickoff here. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, uh, a big night for, for Minot trying to uh, get that seventh win of the season and uh, obviously coming in as the big favorite, but. Uh, Williston, you know, trying to end their season strong as we've got a big kick return to start this one off. Yeah, Jade Rian Small across midfield and knocked out of bounds at the 45-ish yard line, and Minot in good field position to start this one. We knew Minot was a high-powered team coming into this one, and especially on the offensive side led by quarterback Lucas Beater. Yeah, Minot can really attack you from a number of different ways. You know, Lucas Beater coming in as a first-year starter, doing a lot and bringing a lot to uh, to that in that spot, but also the rushing attack. We profiled him this week on uh, KX News at 6 and 10. I uh, had, of course, Griffin Broderick and Tyson Raziska uh, leading a, a two-headed monster, a thunder and lightning duo, and they go right to the, th the thunder with Broderick for the big first down. Broderick rumbling ahead, sheds a tackler down inside the 30 and across to the 25. That's where he's brought down a big-time gain of about 20-ish yards for for the uh, junior, yes, he is the thunder to the lightning combo that we talked about in our previews ahead of this one. And, uh, yeah, Broderick, a big-time run to get things going. And, of course, you know, Tyson Raziska is the leading leading back kind of that, that senior that's returning and uh, has kind of the lion's share of the carries. Uh, and you got two of those guys in the backfield, a lot for that uh, Williston defense to uh, kind of manage and look at here. The two running back split shotgun, this time Beater stepping back, looking across. It's Conklin intended, makes the finger grab and in for the touchdown. Two plays, Minot into the end zone, a minute on the drive. Logan Conklin, the touchdown. Logan Conklin, he's been, that's all he's done all season is make big time plays for the Magi. His seventh receiving touchdown on the season and only his 16th catch overall. So that's a pretty good touchdown to, re to reception ratio for the, the senior standout. Of course, plays basketball, got an offer from Minot State and you know shows why uh, on uh, on that play there. And Gellin Burke makes the extra point. It's 7 nothing, just like that for Minot. So Broderick and then it's Logan Conklin. The big time receiver standing tall at 6'5". He was one of our kicks, Athletes of the Week from Week 2, and uh, he makes another incredible grab with two defenders between them and still able to hold on on the finger fingertips there. Had our number one play of the week. Uh, you talked to him after uh, that catch against uh, Legacy early in the season. The the, the, the toe-tap grab, this time the showing the, the verticality, of course, that big 6'4 frame uh, doing a lot for him. And... Obviously a big start for, for the passing offense. Coming off a game where it was really the rushing attack leading the way with the windy conditions, a really a battle of uh, ranked teams with uh, the Magi and Bismarck. And now the it seems like the offense, the passing offense was like, all right, we're, we finally have a chance to throw and uh, showed it there and uh, eager to, to get that first touchdown through the air. It comes as no surprise that Minot, a team ranked third in the state coming into this one, just been a really solid team overall out of the West, and with a win tonight, could win the region as we kick it off. And Williston State, or Williston, excuse me, gathering it here just across the 20 yard line, and that is where the Coyotes' offense will get going, led by Alex Bloom, the junior quarterback, taking over. First year starter for the Coyotes. This is a really pass heavy offense in the first year under Mark Kennedy. Uh, a lot of that uh, just out of necessity, and, and Kennedy told me this week, you know, it's kind of uh, adjusting to the personnel he has, and I think that's a sign of a, a good coach is is knowing the personnel you have and and working your system around it and molding it to to the, the players and the, the weapons you have available. The weapons available tonight for Williston spread out is Braden Lund and Jackson Tam, as of course the uh, notable omission is Isaiah Saint Romain, a wide receiver going to NDSU next year, as it's Bloom and throws it over the head of Coulter Asbel intended there, and so incomplete brings up second and ten. Yeah, obviously hate to, to lose an All-State receiver like an Isaiah St. Romain out with a, a broken collarbone. I saw him this week, and he's hoping to, to be back by, by basketball season, that January timeline, and yeah, hopefully we get to see him back because, I mean, he was electric 
already on the football season before that injury, and of course is, is a heck of a basketball player too. So uh, I would love to see him back on the on the court as soon as possible. So next man up mentality for the Williston Coyotes as they set up in the pistol. Winners of two of their last three games. Bloom already harassed, rolling out to his left, throws across, and it's a early contact on the intended receiver, Coulter Asbell. That'll draw a flag, and we'll see what it is, most likely against the Minot defense. Yeah, that's when when the, the flag kind of came out, so you assume that's the call. Waiting for official word. No pass interference on the defense will bring up automatic first down, so move the chains for the Coyotes on the penalty. A good play there from Bloom, it kind of working his way out of the pocket, as you mentioned, pressure right in his face, and just giving his uh, his guy receiver a, a chance, and you know one of those th things where uh, the defender got there early, and they got a first down. Bloom nearly a thousand yards in through the air this season as the quarterback, ten touchdowns on his ledger, a pretty good passer of the ball in his first year as a starter, as he has the pressure in his face and nearly intercepted on the tip drill. It was intended for Asbell again. Been going to him three times in a row. The senior out there at double ones on his jersey. That was the on the on the coverage was Anthony Brown, one of these returning starters for the Magi. This back seven uh, of defenders does a lot for this team and kind of allows them to play a three-four style and and of course getting some pressure up front, uh, kind of from that front three and those two backers on the outside uh, allows those. Uh, a lot of those guys in the, in the back seven, back six, really, to, to make some plays. We've also seen pressure from the line from Minot as well. Uh, but Wilson has done a good job of getting the ball out before that pressure gets home. Bring up second and ten. This time, their first rush of the game. It's a hand up to Mike Walker Michael, the senior, who maybe gains one. So it'll bring up third and long for the Coyotes. And you'd love to get, to get the run game going if you're Wilson, of course. But nothing doing there that time. Stout defense. From the Magi, and as I mentioned last week, that that run game, that that run defense, the really controlled, kind of the story of that game uh, against Bismarck, and a uh, good stop there. This Legacy team, winners of two of their last three, their first program win over Legacy ever three weeks ago, a loss of Century, but then a win at Watford City. As Bloom steps back, goes deep, dials it up, but over the head of his intended receiver Braden Lund, his first target of the game, will bring up fourth down for the Coyotes. Brown on the coverage, and it'll be Aiden Sander that's going to punt it away for the Coyotes. Back to receive, it'll be Kellen Burke. Now the, the Swiss Army knife of this Minot team does a lot. We already saw him kick an extra point, returns. They'll, they'll, they'll use him in, in motions, get the ball to him in space. Seen him throw for a touchdown as well against Mandan. So always got to keep an eye on number three. Punt away, low liner. And a roll off a Minot player. It was loose, and then Burke covers it. It was off one of the gunners, and almost a chance for Williston to be in business there in Minot territory. But Burke heads up play there. Yeah, that's a, a heads up play when you know, you're, you're you're coming back, trying to make a block, trying to get in, in position. Of, of course, you got to know where the football is at all times uh, when you're, especially when you're, you're turning your back towards it there. And uh, fortunate for for Minot to be able to recover that. So Minot will take over at the 30 on their second drive, just under two, just a little over two minutes into this one. 7 nothing Magi. They scored on their first drive in two plays. We'll see what they do here with Beater. And hands off to Ruziska. No, excuse me, on the end around. It, yeah, it is Ruziska, excuse me, as he beats the edge and gets across to the 40 and brought down there a big run. We give him 30 yards on the carry for Ruziska. Nicely done. A name we'll, we're not done calling yet. Tyson Rosiska, the, the the bell cow, the, the the lead back of this team, and and uh, you know talking to his fellow running back, backfield maiden Griffin Broderick, he said he he thinks he's the fastest kid in the state. Hasn't seen him get caught yet, and that's proved pivotal multiple times this season, and uh, another big gain there for the senior. So chunk plays for Mina on their first three offensive downs, a first down opportunity inside the forty for the Magi. Beater in the shotgun, handing it off for Ziska this time, going to his left, following his blockers, and a good wrap-up there from the Williston defense. Looked like it was. It was Matthew Schmidt on the tackle. So the 
first time that Williston has brought up second down on defense in this game. And now we got a timeout, and it's a timeout to Williston, so first time out of the half for the Coyotes. And talk things over against this uh, this Minot offense who, who likes to be multiple. That's kind of a common thing on, on both sides of the ball, uh, bringing a lot of a lot of talent, a lot of different guys to throw to uh, for Lucas Beater, of course. Um, but, you know, they also look to strike off play action, and, and what better way to do that when you've got the run game going? And that's kind of, I think, worked off each other uh, for Minot this year of really being able to attack the defense from both ways and not really being in the key in on the run. I think that was kind of Minot's calling card last year. But being being multiple, I think, is, is a big thing for this offense, and you've seen it play out multiple times this season. Incredible stat for the Minot Magicians. They've outscored their opponents over 150 to 22. Pretty good. <laughs> in the first half. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, they are known to get off to good starts, and that is the key to a Magi victory. Coming in 6-1 and one on the year. Another handoff, Ruziska up ahead. Plenty of room. Gets close to the first down marker. We'll see if they give it to him. He might be just short. Looks like it's going to be third and short. The Magi. You mentioned fast starts. That's exactly what Chauncey Hendershot told me this week. Is he he wants to see his team come out fast and, and just really overwhelm the the opponent right away. And I mean, we've seen that to to this point. And really, uh, I think kind of a, something he's emphasizing for the team going into the playoffs. We'll see what they do on third and short in striking distance once again. Single back formation, a bunch line. Conklin in motion. A little fumble the snap, and Beater has to fall on it. So not what you want if you're a Magi fan. And a loss of four on the play. It'll bring up now fourth down. Yeah, always tough to know what that center quarterback exchange, whose fault it is when it's under center. I saw Lucas Beater kind of tapping his chest saying, my bad. Is he just being a good teammate, or did he pull his hands too early? Because that's that, that could have been you know what resulted in that bad snap. So instead of a third and short, now it's even a fourth and short. If it was an unsuccessful play, now brings a fourth and four. And a critical down for this Williston defense if they want to get their offense back on the field. Empty set now. In motion, Caden Kraft, rolling beater, throws, complete. It's Rosiska on the grab. And it will move the change for the Magic. Yeah, Rosiska, another one of those... Uh, a receiver out of the backfield who can can make a lot of plays, and he's put up a lot of a lot of yards. Uh, the big play capable certainly out of the backfield, and, and you saw it there with uh, some nice hands. Now, a scoring opportunity for Minot as we move along in this first quarter. Seven nothing Minot against their rivals Williston. Beater swinging it out. Ruziska makes the man miss and tripped up. No, he did not make him miss. A nice tackle there. It was Jaden Tanner on the stop. Kind of the, the, the main receiver on offense and making a play there on defense for the Coyotes. So nothing doing on the Rosiska swing. I think we will call that a pass. Just a little bit forward, I think. <laughs> Helping out Beater's completion percentage. Exactly. In a motion again. A lot of motion in this offense. This is a handoff this time. Up ahead, it's Kellen Burke on the carry. That's a common theme with this this Minot offense. You know, stretching the defense vertically or horizontally, and then of course you, you want from your runners to go north and south. And I think these these, these Minot runners, whoever is going to get the ball, I think if, if you look at the stat sheet, there's like nine or ten different guys who who have carries and have gotten yards. Uh, one of those guys gets gets north and south and is got a th third and short here. Beater swinging it out to Broderick. Broderick following blockers, and he has the edge, and he has the pylon. He's in. Touchdown, Griffin Broderick. And Minot extending their lead. Another one of those plays we've seen before from this Minot team. And, you know, you usually think you're, you're big back, you're, you're, you're tough to tackle between the tackles guy. But Broderick, we've seen him get on the outside a few times, and Minot able to, to pull a few guys and kind of get, get get a seal on the edge. And then it's you got some corners trying to, to bring down a big body like Broderick that's uh, so tough for many defenses to stop and uh, obviously uh, not able to stop it there. We have a false start on the extra point. Yeah, Broderick not touched on that touchdown run. All right. 
He's such a big guy, it's hard to believe that he could go in there unscampered. But sure enough, gets in for the score, his sixth touchdown of the year, the junior. As we now move back five yards for the extra point, kick is up, and we're good. 14 to nothing, Minot leading nearly halfway through this first quarter. Broderick, another one of those guys with a, a Minot State offer, fairly recently picked that one up. And, yeah, he's going to be, uh, I mean, with, with Raziska graduating next year, I mean, uh, imagine another year in the, the Magi Muscle Strength Program for, for a guy like Griffin Broderick. He's going to be a, a force to wreck. He already is a force to reckon with uh, for any defense trying to tackle him. I think Tyson Raziska mentioned to me, he thinks defenses are, are scared to tackle him. And, I mean, I was never a great tackler, but I would be afraid to tackle him if I was still in high school. Yeah, especially when he gets that momentum moving forward. Yeah. You don't want to be in front of him <laughs> yeah. when he comes downhill on the field. That's yeah, something Chauncey Hendershot said. When, when he puts the foot, a foot in the dirt and can, can get downhill, down on a straight line, there, there's not many guys who can, who can meet him one-on-one. -on -one. So now Minot will kick it away, and it will be Williston's second possession of this quarter. A little roller will be... Nearly picked up and fallen. No, no, picked up by Jackson Tamez and follows a little bit of blockers. Had a little bit of space, but gets across to the 23-yard line. So Wilson coming in, had that, that first drive, basically a, a three and out, had that penalty and moved the ball up a little bit. Still trying to find some rhythm, find some, some yardage gain for this offense. Kennedy in his first season, making his return to Minot High. He was here before as an assistant. It's his first time maybe on the other sidelines here also, at Dwayne Carlson. Yeah, well familiar with uh, with this team and, and with this area, of course. It was also the, the Surrey head coach a long time in nine-man. Loom, pass out and dropped Jaden Tanner, the intended receiver, but through his hands. Yeah, good throw right in the, in, in the hands. A little bit up high, but you, you want your receiver to bring that one in. Now, a big thing I've, I've been able to pick on, on on Mark Kennedy was is just you talk to, to Minot, you talk to the Williston players, and they mentioned just his you know building relationships. Even when I was at practice, you see him bringing the, the D linemen and sitting down, and he's telling them some kind of story, and, and they're laughing and having fun. I think that's a, a big thing about what makes him a, a good coach and at where he's had success kind of wherever he's been. Bloom handing it off up ahead into the pile. And we're going to... Say momentum stopped there, so a gain of two. We'll bring up third and long for Williston. It's Casey Storbachen on the carry. Leading rusher for Williston. A team that rushes 94 yards per game, 153 through the air. They do have some pretty good offensive numbers. It's just hoping that they don't fall behind early in games. That's a big key, especially on the road uh, against a really tough Minot team. Bloom, step back, sees pressure, running for his life, back at the five, throws it up for grabs and out of bounds, incomplete. But he was harassed back there. Could have been a big loss if Minot could get home. Yeah, that's really tough for, for your quarterback to, to deal with when he's we got pressure in his face and trying to look downfield and already a little bit behind the sticks. Uh, another tough offensive series, and Minus looks to be getting the ball back. So Wilson will punt it away, their second punt of the game. We're in a chilly evening here in the Magic City. Kickoff temp right around 50 degrees Fahrenheit is another low runner. This time Burke catching it on the fly and across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. So no drama here this time on the punt return. Yeah, just the team's coach just kind of holding his breath after a near turnover. So Minot flicking on all cylinders to start this one. 14-0. A team that has some high hopes of getting to a Dakota Bowl. would be their first since 2017 that they have gotten there if they could go through the gauntlet of AAA playoffs. And off. In slipping, I think, was Rosiska. Looked like he slipped on the turf, so only a gain of one. Anytime someone slips on a turf or anything happens with turf, that brings up the, the grass turf discussion. 
<laughs> I know the, the a lot of commenters about that. <laughs> you never know what people have opinions on nowadays, but there is a little bit of a, a moisture kind of to the air tonight. As Beater handing it off for Ziska on the delay, up ahead, just short of the first down mark. It'll bring up third and short for Minot. Just good burst there from you know Rizisca able to just find his way through the tackles. And uh, you know, something that I think you know Minot kind of harped on earlier this week that they did well is run between the tackles. It's not always you know not always yards to be had outside. It's it's about getting those chunk plays in the middle sometimes and, and you know keeping uh, ahead of the sticks. These guys are moving quickly on offense as well. They don't give their opponents much to breathe as Rosiska up ahead, breaks a tackle, up ahead, cross the 20. Nicely done, Tyson Rosiska as he gains the first down and a lot more. Down to the 19-yard line. Another big gain for Rosiska. And on third down, too, converting there. It's been big so far for Minot. It's been all their offense in this drive so far. Still in the backfield. Eater, quick out to Conklin. Conklin with a second grab. Across the 10, across the 5, into the end zone. Perils his way. Lost the ball as he went in, but looked like he crossed the plane before. And it's a touchdown, the second touchdown grab for Logan Conklin. This time on the screen pass. Yeah, not a, not a typical Logan Conklin touchdown. It was more of a, you know, set up a screen and get some blockers out there. He did a nice job just kind of waiting patiently, looking for a, a seam. And, and once he, he found that lane kind of cutting back to the left side, he was he was off to the races and another touchdown for Logan Conklin. And we got a doink on the extra point. So it'll stay at 20, dead off the, uh, uh, the, the post there. But the 20 to nothing. But, yeah, Conklin, you know, surprising guy with the amount of speed he has for his tall frame. He does have a lot of speed uh, when turning up field. Yeah, he's not just some tall body. You know, he's an explosive, uh, big-time athlete. I mean, even at, at state track, he was second in the state in high jump and just kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, I remember talking to some state champions at, at, from Minot for, for track, and they're like, oh, yeah, that was like one of the craziest moments of the meet was when you could see Logan Conklin come out of nowhere and, and grab second. So uh, a big-time athlete and, and jumper, and I've, obviously that, that explosiveness – helping him kind of find his, his lane into the end zone. I always love covering that high jump event <laughs> on yeah. state track and field, you know. A lot of pressure there. Everyone's kind of watching you in the bowl. It's... But he's built for high-pressure moments. He's been to state tournaments in basketball and, and making plays on the gridiron here, looking to maybe cap off a senior season with a state title. Ball's going to kick out of bounds, so we're going to have a penalty on Minot, and that will move the ball up ahead for Williston on their third drive. And going back to Conklin a little bit, you know, he's had also a, a lot of a lot of reps at, at the varsity varsity level on on both sides, really. And you know, when you when you can get those kids experience early and let them make the mistakes and 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 learn on the field, you, you cannot cannot you know simulate game reps. And I think that's really paying off for for Logan Conklin here as a senior. So Williston back on the field, third drive of the quarter. Down 20 to nothing here in the first quarter. Wilsden 1 and 3 in the West. They won win over Legacy. A little bit of a bobble sand, and they're going to say he actually had his knee down. So Bloom, while trying to corral the snap, unfortunately, put his knee down, and he uh, is a loss of four there. Ah, yeah, that's tough. It's one where the play would keep going if it were the NFL. Yeah, well. <laughs> This, unfortunately, is not the yes. NFL. <laughs> so that will bring up second and 14 as Bloom's self-sack there. And loss of four. Bloom, a pretty good baseball player, though. We've got a lot of good baseball talent on this field on both sides, honestly. As he hands it off, up ahead, Storbach in with the carry, and maybe a gain of one. Yeah, that Williston team was uh, pretty pretty good for, for uh, baseball last year. I mean, I think, I don't know about a team that had more ability to just out of nowhere, you know, rattle off 10 runs or something. I mean, that they were a really, uh, really streaky unit 
that could uh, you know really really surprise some teams, and I, I think we saw that this season and in Legion season. Yeah, Shout exactly. out to Willis and Keybirds. That's right, Legion Legion uh, State champs, the Keybirds. A lot of these names I recognize from this Keybirds team. Bloom stepping back, third and long, and this time met behind the line on the sack. Brady Larson there finding his way through. We do have a penalty flag. We'll see what it is. It's going to be a hold on Williston, so I'm sure Chauncey will decline it. Coach Hedder shot. Bring up fourth down. We knew this Minot line would get home. They've been all around Alex Bloom already in this game and finally getting their first sack of the game. No punt, and no, we're going to have a false start this time on the Coyotes. Another penalty for the road team. Off to a tough start here in the Magic City. They're really just looking for... For any positives, you can kind of, you know, start to, to build up and and maybe try and turn the tide. Has not been the case so far. Yeah, this was a tough. If you're a Williston Coyote, as you punt away, nearly blocked. Up ahead, almost hit another Minot Magi, and that's going to roll across down to the 42 down there. But if you're Williston, you knew coming in this was going to be a tough game and a tough team, but if you understand that if you're Mark Kennedy, you're in a year of transition. You're you're making your own mark on the uh, on the program here, and you, you understand that there's going to be some growing pains here, but already some improvements as he's seen with this group, and certainly a lot of optimism moving forward for this program. Mark, we're going to leave his mark. <laughs> there Let's you go. There. I do. I would like to believe I'm good at my. <laughs> Beater rolling back on the play fake. He goes long to Conklin. Incomplete, but we're going to have a penalty. That's a tough play one-on-one. -on -one. Conklin drawing the flag. Yeah, it was Tanner, Jaden Tanner a little bit. Shaking up on the play. One of the top targets for Williston. He walks off immediately. And as you mentioned, you know, trying to, to rebuild this program. If you're Mark Kennedy, you know, um, he, he talked about seeing improvement really everywhere throughout this season. Uh, little things that, you know, fans might not even think about of the quarterback being able to change the play at the line of scrimmage, linemen, you know, talking and making calls, backers calling out gaps, and, and things like that are, are kind of how you start to start to turn the tide of a program that, as, as you mentioned, hasn't had a, a lot of recent success. His handoff, Rosiska dancing around, but... A whole lot of movement for maybe a gain of one for Tyson Rosiska on that first down play. <laughs> it was pretty contained pretty well by that Williston uh, front front five. Williston interestingly plays with four down linemen, two linebackers, and five DBs on the field most of the way. So more speed for the Coyotes as they uh, line up on defense. We approach the final minute of quarter number one handoff. This is Jadrian Small across the left side. Knocked out of bounds, but we do have a flag. For now, it's at the 26-yard line. Anytime you see a run kind of going to the outside and the, the flag thrown, you can almost assume it's a hold. The refs are looking over to the Wilson sideline to see what they call. I think they're most likely uh, accept this penalty. Yeah. If I had a hunch. <laughs> Fire with the coach. They'll be pushing the ball back and bring up second down again here on the penalty. 20-0, why not? Just a couple weeks left of the regular season before we hit playoff time. We are less than a month away from the Dakota Bowl. Crazy to think about where we were at the start of this year and where we are now. We were just talking about how the Region 4 Rumble seems like it was not that long ago. We were having, man. having a conversation before the game about that. As Minot's going to have a conversation about this second down play with their first time out of the half. But yeah, this, this season always seems to fly by, I think. A lot of people are surprised with how quickly uh, eight weeks can go, but it's been a wild one. 
Yeah, and, and when you mix in kind of the, the wildness that you can get from, from the volleyball season, Class A, Class B, you got swimming, you got tennis, you got soccer, you got a lot going on. Just keeps keeps us sports guys busy, keeps us running around. If you're Williston, obviously uh, Minot's had their way with this team, but what are you looking to key in on? As you know, you have Conklin on the outside, but you know what, what they have in the backfield. How do you keep Minot behind the chains? It's tough. I think you, you got to be uh, maybe look to disguise some stuff. Is Rusiska up ahead? Plenty of room, and finally tackled up ahead for a first down. Jaden Tanner again, and again he's slow to get up on the stop, but a first down. But yeah, that's exactly what Minot can present. All kinds of issues through the ground, through the air. You can have the discussion of of what do you do? You know, do you, do you try and blitz? What do you, what all do you do? You know, it, it can be tough when you're not losing the run game. We'll talk about it more after this quarter break. We're going to go to a commercial. We'll be right back with more Minot versus Williston right after this. Welcome back, and while we were away, uh, Minot got a quick start to the second quarter, and uh, Tyson Rosiska, two rushes and two plays into the end zone, so Minot on the board once again. Fortunately, we could not bring that to you as uh, a little quick start to the second quarter. Extra point up and good, 27 to nothing, but Tyson Rosiska, his first touchdown of the game, and so all the weapons scoring right now for Minot, spreading the love for that Minot offense right now. This show rolls on, of course, coming off a big week over Bismarck on the road in that one, and obviously had that, that, that touchdown that really sealed it in that game against the Demons, that 62-yard yard scamper that pretty much put that one away, and yeah, continuing that, that effort tonight, and it's been, it's been a, a balanced attack. It's not, it's not been, we haven't had one Hank Bodine scoring six touchdowns tonight. It's been a few of the <laughs> weapons on, on this Minot team, each getting into the end zone. Yeah, I don't think we get that much very often with the <laughs> Bodine uh, performance we had last week. but Which was strange because Velva has a lot of different guys they can get into the end zone. Certainly. If you're wondering if your uh, picture is uh, maybe not working, it's because uh, Minot's wearing black uniforms tonight. You may think they're in their traditional maroons, but yes, no. They're wearing black uniforms tonight in honor of our uh, troops. Uh, military Appreciation Night. We'll touch back on the kickoff. But, yes, uh, 
kind of has a different feel with these uniforms on. They look pretty cool, and I, I think the team was surprised beforehand. Yeah, a bit of a Legacy Sabres deal, as we, we mentioned before, but yeah. it really is a, a pretty nice look. I mean, you can't go wrong with the, the black uniforms. Everyone seems to do those, and I, I'm a fan of them every time. They even got like a black Minot logo, Magi logo mm -hmm. on, the sh on the shoulders. You uh, walk up close to them. Wilston taking over at the 20-yard line. Bloom in the shotgun handing it off. It's Storbachen, but met immediately by the gang of Magi. Brady Larson there in on the tackle. Landon Bedell also there in on the stop. Second down. In a really stout Magi defense. Only giving up nine points a game. Four shutouts as well. And it, it hasn't been an easy schedule either. It's, you know, a couple of those shutouts have come out against, against some uh, pretty impressive teams. Talking about like a Fargo Davies team, right? That was a little bit of a battle. And they, they, they seem to handle some teams. That ball's tipped at the line nearly. It was nearly completed to Jaden Tanner, but. Looked like Griffin Broderick was there tipping the ball at the line. That caused the uh, wobbly pass. Another one of those Minot guys that goes both ways. Making a nice play there. The third and long for Williston. Hoping to get into any sort of rhythm here. On offense, but this Minot defense has been swarming all over the field. Split out. Coulter Asbell on the bottom of your screen. Shotgun. Bloom. Rolling. Right. Throw. Asbell complete. Tries to shed some tacklers. Gets to about the 29, but that's going to be short of the first down marker by a yard. We'll bring up fourth and short, and looks like Mark Kennedy's bringing out the punt unit. That's a nice nice idea when, you, when your quarterback's facing pressure is you know, create moving pockets and, 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 and kind of create some, some room to throw that way. Just unfortunate it happened to be on, on third down in your own territory. Now in this territory, Chauncey Hendershot shows he's not not afraid to go for it. Went for it on his own 19 last week, but it looks like the Coyotes are going to punt. Punt away here. A little bit of a short one. Going to go way to the left and rolling back to about the 36-yard line. So only a 6-yard punt? No, a 12-yard punt or so? I'm, I'm, I'm not good with A little with bit the on, the, on, the, on the run back, <laughs> on the, the rollback. Yeah, the yeah. rollback helped a little bit. But, yes, uh, Minot set up very well on offense here in their fifth drive of this half. Already up 27 to nothing here in the second quarter. And it's really been, been both both ways through the air. You got Broderick a touchdown, same with Radiska, and a couple touchdowns for uh, Logan Conklin as well through the air. So Minot. One of two home games left on the schedule in the regular season, and they're hoping to play some more in the postseason. Hoping to win a WDA title for the second year in a row. Broderick up ahead. Untouched uh, down to the 20, across the 20 to the 18. Griffin Broderick had plenty of space as he moved, maneuvered up ahead of the field. It's another big chunk run. A little bit of elusiveness there for Broderick on that run. Minot's getting a lot of space in those runs. Those linemen are doing a pretty good job of giving the uh, the running backs the opportunities to break open. Shotgun again for Beater, calling out. Run out. That incomplete to Caden Kraft, and Kraft is down to uh, the... 13-yard line. Excuse me, by the way, it's not Beater that's in at quarterback. It's now Cash Danielson, so we're already seeing the second-string quarterback in playing this one. That senior backup. It was down to him and Beater on who would be the starting quarterback heading into this, this season and Beater winning the job. But nice to see Cash Danielson, member of the all-name team. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> pretty money on that first pass to Caden Kraft. He said it was a pretty good battle between these two guys, and Cash could have easily started for Minot and seen just as good a production as he hands it off Roderick, but he's harassed at the front of the line. A 
Good gang tackle. You know, there's Matthew Schmidt again. He's been active on the defensive side for Williston. Yeah, and this was really a, a, a three-player battle for who would be the starting quarterback after, of course, Jaden Sparrow moving on to Minot State. Just scored his first career touchdown last weekend at Northern State for the Beavers. But it was down to Beater, Danielson, and, uh, of course, uh, the do-it-all guy for Minot and Kellen Burke. Um, and ultimately, Beater winning that job. But, again, you know, nice to see the, the senior – Get some reps and, and get some experience playing playing quarterback here. Danielson in at QB. Broderick right next to him. Takes the snap. Rolling to his right. Looking to throw into the end zone. A jump pass and a grab. Oh. Nicely done. Braden Nelson. A touchdown grab. The senior getting up and get it. I believe that's Braden Nelson's first touchdown of the season. The Minnesota Crookston baseball commit. Big time frame at 6'6", six, six, and showing it and using it there to go up and get that touchdown in the end zone. It's also Cash Danielson's first touchdown pass of the year. So good for him as well. So a couple of firsts on that drive as the extra point is good. Make it 34 nothing. Why not? Ka-ching. <laughs> yeah, I heard from a lot of coaches down in the West, down in the Minot, or down in the Mandan Bismarck area that Minot – even with Sparrow gone, as one of the best quarterback situations in the state, in their opinion. Yeah, there are a lot of different guys. I mean, I mean if, he, if he told me Cash Danielson's a starting quarterback on that drive, I'd be like, yeah, he, he made, uh, made a good throw. And, and put it in a spot where only his guy could get it. That's a big thing. Didn't put it into, into harm's way in the red zone and adding on to the Minot lead. So Minot putting on an offensive clinic to start this one. Playing very well here at home, and the home fans are enjoying it, despite a chilly night here in the Magic City. We are once again grateful to be inside for a change. And I have the jacket off now, but I'm, I might have been regretting it just a little bit. We have a little bit of a window open here as we kick it away. And it'll kick into the end zone. Another touchback, and Williston back on offense. And just trying to get some, some offense going. Yeah, they had they had some good looks to start, and of course the rollout pass that was complete it was just short. They've been they've been close, but it hasn't been able to be put together in a complete drive yet. Seems like some of his throws, it's been the, the throw is too high, or uh, had a couple drops, of course, and that obviously a bad combination and, and stalled out every drive for the Coyotes so far. Why not leave the season or the series all time thirty eight to eleven? Wilson hoping to show some offense here as a pass out to Jaden Tanner. A little quick out and gains about five. Another thing you got to do when you're facing pressure is just get the ball out of, out of your hand quick, and that was kind of the MO on that play. So some positive yardage, making a second and manageable for Williston. Got their entire cheerleader crew here tonight. I let the coach know that, hey, you're going to be on TV. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, great. <laughs> no, this is going to be a good – good to see both cheerleading squads here traveling. Throw out, incomplete, high. Then for Mason Hurst. Covered well. And so overall, just a really fun game day atmosphere at Minot. If you're an avid watcher after the whistle, you may have seen my profile on the Minot High Band. One of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, pep bands in the state. And that, that was something that you know, Chauncey Hendershot, when he took over this program uh, back in 2020, was really emphasized of, uh, emphasized of kind of building up the, the game day atmosphere, making it something that the community wants to come out to. And uh, we've, we've certainly seen that all season. And uh, always a, a loud student section in, in the cheerleaders. It just really feels like a, a, you know, a, a typical Friday night. You got a stoppage of play. And Mark Kenny's going to say, let's talk about this third down. Important time to continue to work on things for the Coyotes. The big third and five, talk about the situation and see if they can get a drive going and continue to have the ball here and work on things. But it is nice that we haven't had the lights out yet. I'm knocking on wood as we speak. <laughs> yeah, but you better. Like last week, <laughs> it was a strange situation that we had at Minot State. 
yeah, for the Bish Brian Velva game, temporarily, temporarily uh, lost the the lights, stadium lights. But thankfully, we were able to get those. They're able to get those back on in uh, ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes or so. Yeah, slight delay, but didn't delay much of Velva's offense, in my opinion. No doubt. After that first drive, of course. After that first drive, yes. So bring up third and down and uh, third and five for the Coyotes. Set up on the near hash. Two wide receivers on that side. Two wide receivers on each side. Back to Bloom. Taking the snap. Rolls right. Pass. And is it complete? No, incomplete. Set up for Tanner. Could not hold on, and that will bring a fourth down, and the punting unit is coming out. Once again, it looks like that was well defended by Anthony Brown. Just able to come down with the hands and you know, knock the ball out of Ch Tanner's hand. And that's you know, one of those finer details that can, can separate corners of you know being able to, to even, even if you are you got the ball in the receiver's hands, like can you knock it out? Can you use a, a peanut punch to get it out? You know, that, that's uh, one of those underrated things that uh, good corners do well. Peyton Sander, the high snap going back to the end zone. We're going to get a safety as he kicked it out of the end zone. So two points for the Magi as Aiden Sander kicked it. Honestly, a pretty good play to avoid more damage from yeah. the punter there. Yeah, well, you got, what was it, three, four uh, Minot guys wanting to, to pick that up in the end zone for a touchdown. You're just playing the numbers game. Got to take the safety. And uh, obviously the, the the bad snap is a, a big one there and gives points, more points to the Magi. Second time that's happened to Williston, in my memory, this year. It happened back at St. Mary's as well. Of course, that was a wet and rainy night at St. Mary's. If you saw some of the highlights in your story last night for uh, Williston, <laughs> I was the miserable uh, sucker that was the uh, student that game. Yeah, it was, it was. I think it was nice and dry up here, and I'm like, oh, it's like it was. It was raining down there. <laughs> skies open up that night. It was wild to see. Clear skies here tonight. Another nice view. We've we've gotten the the good good views of both of our games these last couple of weeks. I'll say this Minot Stadium when the sun is setting is one oh, of the prettiest so stadiums. So picturesque. Picturesque stadiums you'll have out here. We'll see what Minot North has to offer next year though. We shall see. A know. whole new world coming to to Minot Minot High Athletics already kind of taking over with a lot of sports getting under with with J V and your 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 name and Head coaches for all the sports. It's uh, yeah, it's it's in it's in progress. So the free kick, up and away, up and into the hands and working his way to the right side. Nice play by Colby Albertson. Yeah, Colby Albertson there, bringing up ahead across midfield and Minot setting up well again. Cash Danielson back in at quarterback, setting up Colby on the return for the more offensive. Firepower for the Magi. We've seen you know a couple a couple nice returns really helping Minot out, and you know that's something that Chauncey Hendershot mentioned to me earlier this week is like you know Kellen Burke's a, a kid who's gotten a few more first downs for us on his returns, and it hasn't been been Burke. It's been a couple other guys doing the returning tonight, but you know one of the underrated parts of the game where you can get extra yards and you know 10, 20 extra yards help out your offense, and once again setting up uh, the offense in plus territory. Carry up the middle. It's scrum and brought back. A gain of two. It looked like on the carry was Shane Small. I believe, if I got the number correct. John Small, excuse me. That is right. Sean Small, according to the PA guy. <laughs> we have the confirmation. So second and eight for Minot. Another handoff. This time Burke busting out to the left side, pushed out of bounds across the 30. Looks like it's enough for a first down. Might be short, though, where the far ref is marking them. Yeah, it's going to make up third and one now for Minot. In motion this time the handoff to to Burke again helping uh, Minot stay in front of the six. 
This offense orchestrated by head coach John C. Hendershot, a former Minot State Beaver, a wideout back in his playing days. Certainly a good offensive mind. Handoff, small up ahead, but met immediately at the line. It's going to be short. But Williston, nicely done to stand on Minot here and bring up a fourth down. Hendershot, of course, playing with none other for at least some time uh, with the Beavers, Mark Kennedy. Or might not say player as well. Wonder if they had a friendly wager ahead of this game of some sort. But former teammates, now adversaries. I'm sure there's a lot of. I don't know how often you talk with each other ahead of the game, but I'm sure there's yeah. going to be some nice pleasantries during yeah. the handshake after. Well, Chauncey Hendershot said, you know, after he got the job, we'll be rooting for you for every game except one. And this is the one, of course. <laughs> this tonight. is the one. Fourth down. Danielson handing it off. Up ahead, plenty of room for a first down. J Jadrian Small there on the carry. We got Sean Small and Jadrian Small getting in on the action in the backfield. A couple more seniors. Nice to see them get get some uh, added added action and extra carries tonight. Thirty-six to nothing. Why not? In control here in the first half. Looking to win the WDA outright with a victory. In their final WDA game of 2023, Danielson out quickly. Kraft, but he's tackled immediately. Nicely done. In on the tackle was Owen Cook. That's another thing, you know, uh, Mark Kennedy mentioned to me this week of Kind of the philosophy of playing defense. You're not playing baseball. You can't just stand there and catch. You got to you got to go and attack your your the ball and and go run and make a play. And that's what exactly what Cook did there. No second and the loss of three on the play. So second and thirteen. Danielson handing it off. Small the carry. Small up ahead. Dip toes the sideline and. He stepped out of bounds at about the 12, short of a first down. Bring up third and two. Adrian Small on the carry. Another one of those sleep, sweep plays, kind of working the outside for Minot, and that always goes to the, the blockers on the outside, your receivers. Everyone loves to see the, the receiver make the, the highlight catch in the end zone, but you know I think a, a big thing of being a blocker or a receiver on this Minot team is can you block and, and can you hold your own on the edge? So third and short. Wilson looking to keep Minot off the board. Danielson with Burke in motion. This time the sweep to Burke. Outside, right side. Shad's a tackler. Can't stay on his feet, but he does have enough for the first down. Kellen Burke down to the seven. Good kind of, kind of a fingertip uh, shoestring tackle. That's the word I'm looking for. Solomon Harris, sophomore, making the play on the outside. Just got enough of him. He almost was able to stay at his feet, but couldn't quite get there. But it is a first and goal for Minot. Sticking under four minutes to go in this first half. Danielson in the shotgun. Takes the handoff outside Caden Kraft. Met immediately. What a tackle there. It's Jaden Tanner. Nicely done to not let him get anywhere else. Just a, a nice form tackle. Yeah, a collision on that, that, that bubble screen kind of pass to the outside. Wilson's been keying in on those screen passes. It hasn't been effective for mine. And Wilson's been able to read those the last few times. And you give them credit, able to take that away. And that, that goes to the corners and, and you know those guys on the outside being able to make plays in space. Not always easy to do. Uh, and obviously well done there on, on that tackle. Danielson on second and goal. This time handing it off small, but he slips. Tackled behind the line in on the stop. And on the stop was, I don't have the number 61 on my roster. So, But a good stop by Williston. On the play, third down now. The two negative plays 
This is the first and goal. And Williston looking to hold Magi off the board here. Five down linemen for Williston. Burke in motion this time. Small the carry. Sheds a tackle up into the four. But it will bring up fourth and goal. John Small on the carry. And a nice drive for a lot of the second unit for, for Minot getting down inside the five and what he looked to do here. Wilston with some red zone defense and I think we're going to get a field goal attempt here as we get a line change of a sense with Minot Eye. And kicking it will be Kellen Burke. We're going to take three points here instead of going for it on fourth. Burke the kick up and add three more. 39 to nothing with 137 to go in this first half. Kellen Burke, of course, one of the, the top scorers on this, this Minot team as, as the kicker and, and extra points. Doing a good job just you know, finding, splitting the uprights. The former soccer player played soccer uh, back in sixth, seventh grade, he told me, and you know, got to high school and kind of had to make a choice, soccer or football, and utilizing his, his soccer skills on the football field as well. Got a good boot. You may have wished he didn't doink it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but unless he's been solid all the way through. Not many high schools do have kickers, so doing more than most. We got some aerial coverage over our over our uh, Dwayne Carlson football game here, but uh, yeah, they're approaching the probably mine out there. I don't know if it's from the airspace or uh, from the airport, but either way, a lot of planes fly over here and mine yes. out do that. Work up ahead, and that'll roll out of the end zone for the touchback. So Williston's going to go on the two-minute offense here, see if they can get anything going before the half, some sort of confidence going into the second half, see if they can get on the board here on the road. And, you know, ultimately, regardless of the final score, like this is the final game for some of these seniors. And this is, you know, I, I remember playing my, my senior year, and you, unless you win a state title, your last game is a loss. But, you know, you remember, you remember your last game and, uh, you know, just the whole journey to get there and, and all the time you spent with your friends playing and practicing, a lot goes into it. And, uh, you know, a lot of these seniors looking to, to finish off their season strong. Alex Bloom in the shotgun, handing it off, up ahead. Covered well by Minot. Of course, Wilson starting the season kind of a week earlier ahead of most of the other AAA teams. So this is the final game for Williston as they wrap up their season and the maiden voyage for Mark Kennedy. But overall, a good effort down the stretch by this team and some encouraging signs moving forward. Yeah, of course, with the, you might, we mentioned that some of the unfortunate in injuries and kind of getting to the end of the season here. And, yeah, overall, you know, the, the team is pretty positive about the, the progress they've made and, and just kind of where the, the program's at and where it's headed. Bloom, handing it off, Storbacken up ahead. We do have a penalty. It was right at the snap when the penalty was thrown, and we're going to have maybe an illegal formation, illegal procedure on Williston. Dominic Thompson on the run there. So his run will be negated. Legal procedure by Williston. 45 seconds to go. Stick around at half because we have a lot of big time updates, not just in football, but as well as the state soccer tournament. This is a big one for a lot of Minot fans out there. The state semifinal against Legacy will update all those scores from around the region at the half. 36 seconds to go, 32 and counting. Second and long for Williston. Maybe ticking down the clock, looking to get out of this half. And the ball snapped over Bloom. A fight for it. A lot of magi around it. And it looks like Minot will have the ball inside the five-yard line. Big number 66 on the recover. Yeah, it was 
Giovanni Perez. Giovanni Perez there on the recovery, and it's not what you want if you're Wilson. You look like you were running out the clock to try to avoid any more damage, and unfortunately the snap getting through Bloom's hand, and now Minot set up to get one more touchdown potentially before this half. Obviously the, the, the finer details of those, the, the snap, always, always tough to, to, to get and, and be consistent with. That's what the, the center's in there to do ultimately. Danielson. We'll get a new ball in there for Minot. Switch it to the Minot ball. Eighteen seconds to go. Two timeouts for the Minot Magic. Nielsen handling it off. Small. With a left side. Plenty of room. Untouched into the end zone. Jadrian Small. His first touchdown of the year. Had a, able to run to open space off that left side, break the plane, and walk into the end zone. Nothing small about that effort. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Will you really? Uh, no, I'll be here. I'll be gone tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back to Bismarck for me. Tune into the capable telethon which I'll be on on Tuesday. Be sure to tune in for that. Liner that's an extra point and good. 46 to nothing. Minot with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So Minot again showing their teeth here at home. And big picture wise. It's a team that has only one loss on the ledger this year to a West Fargo Cheyenne team, who certainly isn't a perfect team out there. They nearly got beat by Century. They have Bismarck tonight. We'll see what that score is at the moment. And of course, that game could mean a lot towards what Minot could do moving into the quarters and even the semis if they want to host two home playoff games according to the QRF. Yeah, I mean, as we've kind of rolled, rolled along with this season in AAA, it seems to be a clear top four and in, in whatever you want to put those top four in. You, know, you got, of course, the defending champs in Shanley, West Fargo, Cheyenne, Minot, and Bismarck. Demons, uh, obviously, resurgent season season for the Demons, and kind of those four seem to be the, the teams that are, are going to be really tough to, to knock out of a Dakota Bowl and, and ultimately winning a state title. you got to believe that Minot-Bismarck game kind of felt like the game of the year for both teams last week, and Mitch Lundy grabs the ball yes. there. Yes. Mr. Shout AD, to Mitch Lundy. Doing a little bit of everything at the high school level, including fielding the ball. AD and now two schools. Yes. <laughs> so double duty for Mitch Lundy moving forward. A little bit more work on his plate. With 12 seconds, you would have believed that Wilson's just going to sit on it here and talk about it at half. Alex Bloom will... Get under center. And takes the knee. And we will go to halftime. 46 to nothing. Minot leading over Williston. We will take a break and we'll be right back with scores from around the region.
Lieutenant Colonel Harris, Grove Air Force, since 1997. Welcome back to the Magic City. 46 nothing at the half. The Magi rolling right now over the Coyotes. And we'll talk about some scores from around the region and some notable ones, of course, in playoff implications. I think the one that a lot of Minot fans are very interested in is Bismarck and West Fargo Cheyenne. At the moment, at half over there in West Fargo, it's the Demon leading 21. 14. We'll see what happens there. Of course, implications say if Bismarck wins that game, suddenly we'll see if whoever will be potentially a two or three seed, according to QRF, we'll see who will be up at the top there and potentially host two home playoff games for the playoffs in AAA. Of course, one more week of football to go, if assuming everybody wins. But 21 nothing Bismarck at the half. Yeah, Fargo Davies up 28 to nothing over Century. Kind of a shocking score there. That one in the fourth quarter, Century, unfortunately, not doing too well against those Davies Eagles. How about this? A surprising score, though. The Shanley Deacons, the number one team, undefeated in the state, manned in right now on the road, beating them 21 to 20. That one in the second quarter. We'll keep our eye on that game as well. St. Mary's beating Legacy High, 31 to 14. That one at the half as well. And then Fargo North over West Fargo right now, the number one team in double-A playing on a triple-A team, 23-12. to Fargo North leading the way. How about some Dickinson, Turtle Mountain. Dickinson on the road leading Turtle Mountain, 40 to nothing. That one in the first half. Of course, you have Jamestown with a six-point advantage over West Fargo. Horace, the fourth-ranked Blue Jays, 20-14. to That one in the second half as well. Watford City trailing 21 to nothing to Devils Lake. Some Single A scores to talk about. Of course, the number one team in the state, Velva, the defending champs, up 52 to seven over Ray. Yeah, Kildare leading 27 to six. They look to make the playoffs out of that Region Four opportunity. Bowman County leading 22 to nothing over Hazen. Of course, if they win, it doesn't matter what Beulah does against Shiloh. Although the Skyhawks leading 21 to nothing over the Miners. There, we will see who solidifies as the four teams out of that region. We're going to look at some other scores. DLB and Stanley, a fight for home playoff hosting possibilities next Saturday. DLB over Stanley right now, 30 to nothing. That one in the first half as well. Take a look at some nine-man scores. Grant County again off to a good start, up 34 to 8 over Napoleon. You've got West Hope up 34 to 6 against Mohall. That one at West Hope, hoping to complete a perfect regular season for the Sioux. Surrey and Alexander. Alexander been a good team all year. Surrey right now up 8-6. to six. That one in the first half. Well, Linton, they need a win to get into the playoffs after their big-time upset over New Salem. Almont, Linton up 34-6 to six over Kidder County. That one in the first half. New Salem, as I mentioned, up 50-6 to six at the first half as well. North Prairie, fifth-ranked Cougars, or excuse me, yeah, Wildcats looking good. 46 to nothing over four wins. That one at the half. As well, and Berthold over Tioga in the first half, 14 to six, the lead there. So those are your scores from around the region. Of course, taking a look at some state soccer results as well. We had a big battle between Legacy and Minot in the semifinal. It was Legacy that ended up pulling away four to two. They advanced to their first state championship tomorrow, and soccer looked to win their first state title ever in program history. Of course, we'll keep an eye on what Jamestown and Shanley does in that other semifinal. That one's still in progress. We'll be right back with more halftime from Minot. We'll take a look at this first half and see what keys are ahead for both teams. We'll be right back after this break.
All right, back from another commercial break. It's 46 nothing Minot over Wilston. And Tristan, what has stood out to you about the dominance of this Minot team so far tonight? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's it's the, the, the fast start, really not. Uh, you know, you, you see a, a, a team that's supposed to win. Sometimes they, they play with their food. They just kind of they make their own mistakes, and they kind of just do um, – they'll let the other team in it. And, you know, really Minot's just – Kind of put down the hammer right away. I mean, I can go through the, the scores a little bit. First, we had that 25-yard touchdown pass from Lucas Beard to Logan Conklin, the second offensive play of the game for the Magi, and that put them up 7-0. Then it was Griffin Broderick, his first rushing touchdown on the night, up 14-0. Then Conklin again on the screen pass to go up 20-0. Raziska, short run to go up 27-0. Touchdown for Tyson. And a couple touchdowns later, and a safety, a field goal, might not able to go up 46 nothing at the half. If you're Williston, what is the message out of this halftime break? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I think it really, if you're Mark Kennedy, you're talking to your seniors. You're saying, hey, how do you want to go out? How do you want to re- remember your, your football life? Do you, do you want to go out, um, you know, giving up, not giving your best effort? Or do you want to go out knowing, you, you know, you played one of the top teams in the state. Um, the result was what the result was. But, you know, you in, within yourself, you, you gave, uh, gave your all. So 46 nothing, Minot leading at the half. We will take another break, and we'll be right back with more second-half football action after this. Welcome back to Minot. Has it's a 46 to nothing lead for the Magi. Williston deferred the coin toss, so they will now receive after they kicked it away to start this one. So, Tristan, if you're Minot, or if you're Williston right now, getting off to the good start in the second half, what key things are they looking to do as they try to move the ball on this suffocating Minot defense? I mean, all year I think the the, the strength of the Coyotes has been what they've been able to do through the air at times. And I think you got to look back to that. And, you know, I think you got to get Alex Bloom on the move a little bit, get him in a few more of those, those uh, rolling pockets and moving pockets and, and get him in, in space and maybe let him make some plays uh, with his feet. He seems like a, a pretty fast athletic kid. So, uh, yeah, that's – it's not a lot you, you can do, but you got to control what you can control and, and just try to try to kind of move things along and, and try to move the chains. He's got a lot of good – completions on the rollout and uh, he's been hitting his favorite target of the night so far Jaden Tanner has been a pretty effective weapon for Williston on offense uh, but stringing together first downs I'm sure that's what has been the conversation of let's just continue to roll 10 yards at a time see what we can do and get some good momentum moving forward into this one and feel good at the end of the night I know we talked about this last week but you know that that, that helps out your defense when you can 
get an offensive drive going and it lets your defense kind of settle in where that Wilson defense has been on the field a lot in that first half and, uh, you know, obviously hoping for something different here in the second half. Let's play more football. The kick is up and away. Taking it back. Storbach in, Storbach in up the middle, and Met just a, before the 20 yard line, and they're going to put him at the 20 yard line. That is where Williston will take over on offense. And of course, now with the lead being 46, we do have a running clock situation, so there's no error right now. Uh, the clock will not stop unless on scoring plays and penalties and timeouts. Williston in their final game of the year, a good step in the right direction. Hoping to get some good momentum into the offseason. Bloom, handing it off, Storbach and up ahead. Powering his way for a gain of possibly two yards. You know, something, another thing Mark Kennedy mentioned to me this week is, you know, this year there is a, a lot of not really looking at the scoreboard a lot. It's a lot of just what, what can you control, and I think, that that really gets tested in, in a game where you're you're down forty six to nothing is is even when the result is what it what it is at the moment, you know, will you continue to play hard? Will you continue to, to give your best effort? And I think that's what he's looking for from his guys. Direction on that carry was Dominic Thompson there. Carrying it for Williston. Second and long. Second and eight. Bloom. Passing out. Jaden Tanner with the catch. Moving across, working the sideline, and up ahead, close to a first down, and it looks to be a first down for Wilston. Move the chains, Jaden Tanner on the reception. I believe that's the Coyotes' first, first official kind of first down of this game. They did get one on a penalty early yeah. in this one, but yes, <laughs> the first time they moved the chains in this one. Pressure off the edge, a handoff, and swarmed up. And the ball was a little bit loose, but it looks like they're going to see it down. Dominic Thompson was down on the play. But a good stop by Minot. I think they might just be saying forward progress on that yep. run, so awesome, maybe a half yard. Looks like Landon Bedell was leading the ref, said, hey, that ball was out. But nothing doing there on forward progress. Looming that pistol, second and 11, we'll call it. Steps back, pressure coming, floats it high. Jaden Tanner, one-on-one, -on -one, oh, off his hands. Oh, he knew he had that. He had the height advantage in on the coverage. One -on -one. Jaden Henderson. That one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, you, you give your, uh, get the advantage on the height like you mentioned, and a good try, just un unable to come up with the catch. I feel like that's a play that would have been drawn up for Isaiah St. Romain, who we are excited to see what he does with the Bison next year and moving forward and what he could possibly do. A big-time athlete for Williston. And, of course, this is a Williston Coyote team that could contend in the WDA and make some noise potentially on the boys' basketball side. Bloom, high floater. But right there is an interception making the catch. Aaron Prestwich. In an interception, and we got a penalty flag after the play. Almost like a punt with how high that pass was, but Presswich making the pick. Obviously, something, some kind of miscommunication there. That's quarterback or receiver, we don't know. But a, a, a good play to, to wrangle that in and once again, give, once again, give Minot back the ball. You got unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense after the play, so. It'll give Minot even better field position as they get going on offense again. Not quite, quite sure what happened on the sideline there. I thought it might have been a late hit, but unless a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and now Minot set up real nice here in their first drive of the second half. Ash Danielson out there again has led the offense the last few drives. Hand off Sean Small up ahead, barreling his way for possibly three or four yards. Sean Small taking it to the defense so far. 
And in this game, you know, as the, the backup, we haven't seen a lot of Cash Daniels in this season, um, but anytime you can get your backup experience, you never know when you're a backup, when you're going to be called upon. So, uh, obviously, uh, a good chance for Cash Danielson to, to get a good get some game reps, things you just can't simulate in practice. The first time he's had real significant game reps all season. Yeah. So, just one for three coming into this game for 15 yards. So, making the most of his opportunity as a handoff to Small again. Another chunk yardage play as he's tackled by like it was Owen Cook on the stop. Bring up third and manageable, third and two for Minot's offense. It seems like Minot's just really lived kind of inside this uh, on the opponent 40. Ball's been there a lot. The last couple drives have been kind of just some methodical running the ball and you know, working it down the field. A lot of open space inside the line. This time a little swing handoff to Colby Albertson. Albertson to the right side. Does he have the corner? He is in for the touchdown, but a penalty flag thrown. This might be coming back. Good play to work, work to the outside and, and keep running, find the end zone. But then I, I, we've seen a few times already in this one the blocking can be, can be tough to hold on the outside when you're trying to hold that edge and, and let your, your receiver get around you. I'm sure as a teammate you're hoping that you can get your uh, – that would have been Albertson's first touchdown of the year, but uh, might be a little too excited to make sure he got, got it. And uh, now it's a holding penalty, and so that will bring the ball back. We're going to say it was enough yardage for a first down, but it will bring the ball back. So they do convert the third down but then bring the ball back. Not a touchdown. Clock moving along here. Plenty of fans in this stadium enjoying the night. Bundled up. A lot of kids playing right in front of us here on the concourse. It's always a good night here in Minot to watch a football game. Like the last time these fans are going to get to see their, their Magi here at home during the regular season. Of course, they get to play West Fargo to end the season. As we get a timeout call, it was a Minot timeout. Their first of the half. And we're keeping an eye on some other scores from around the state, obviously. And Dan leading still against Shanley. But, of course, now Bismarck taking a 28-14 lead over West Fargo Cheyenne. Bismarck still has Century to play. That could be a good quality win. We'll see what the QRF says. I know Minot has beaten Bismarck, but we'll see what that means for Bismarck with the quality wins moving forward because, of course, the strength of schedule favors Bismarck moving ahead. Yeah, the, the, a, lot, a lot of games around the state seem to be really uh, impactful of what – the, the final standings look like. Still a lot to shake out, even at the 9-man and 11-A level, still a lot to, to determine and, and really square away here on uh, on this this last week of the Friday Night Frenzy. I wonder if it, uh, we see Cash Danielson this time taking it, but immediately swarmed and tackled Jaden Wilson on the stop. I'm going to say he's actually a tackle for loss on the carry by Danielson. But I want to ask you the question, you know, Minot does beat Bismarck head-to-head, -head, but if Bismarck has a better QRF, is it fair that Bismarck potentially gets to host that playoff game? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the discussion. Um, in my head, no. I think if you, if you prove yourself one-on-one -on -one against the team that it's, it's a toss-up, but you know, it, it kind of works, works out in other ways. So it's tough to look at just one, one scenario and say, oh, that's, that's how everything should be determined by, but that's where we are. Got a handoff on the jet sweep motion, Colby Albertson, but he's met immediately. We do also have a penalty. I think I saw a flag on the play. Maybe I just saw, yeah, nope, there's going to be a decline. It looked like an illegal procedure for Minot, but it's going to be declined by Mark Kennedy. Bring up third and long. Might have been an illegal shift. Run into that with uh, a lot of motion guys and on the line who's not and another thing why why these game reps are are important is those those fine details really matter 
in the postseason, and you never know when you're uh, in that too deep and, and, and called upon. you got to be able to, to ex execute and, and not be uh, someone who's uh, you know obviously causing penalties for your team. Danielson under center on third and long. John Small in the backfield. Delay, play action, throwing deep to the end zone. Coverage there, incomplete, falls at the feet. Trying to see who was in on the target. It was Colby Albertson out there. Good coverage on the play. Looked like Col Coulter Asbell on the coverage. It'll bring a fourth down for Williston. The defense playing well here on this opening drive. Looks like Manat's going to try a field goal. Ellen Burke, a pretty long field goal attempt here. 41 yards. 41 yarder. Up, away. It's enough, and it's through. Oh, that, Kellen Burke. 42 yarder. Make it 49 nothing. Why not? Nicely done. Made that kick on, on college game day. Be going home with some money. <laughs> Has anybody been successful at that so far? The guy last week got close. He got close. It was, <laughs> that was at the Cotton Bowl, that's right? Yes. It's a little short. He was on the line. But didn't have the distance. Alan Burke did. I'll say I've attempted one field goal in my life, and I, I think I rolled it about 10 feet ahead of me. <laughs> you know, I like to think I'm, I'm a fairly athletic guy. I'm not to brag, but I'm running a half marathon here in the next week or so. Wish you luck on that. Thank you. Just hoping for no injuries. <laughs> Don't want to finish last. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll need you for playoffs, so no yes. injuries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But kicking, I am hopeless. I can't kick anything. I was that, I was that kid in kickball who was just trying to, like, Bunt it so I could run to first. Oh, Man, I don't know what it is. I never learned how to kick. I kick a soccer ball pretty good. I, I, I have some moves on the sideline. The soccer kids sometimes see what I, way I can kind of handle a ball. And they're like, oh, whoa. I blame my parents. You know, I never played soccer growing up. Yeah. I missed out on some key, key skill development. Wilson this time taking the kickoff and they're moving ahead. It's Brubachen up ahead. Thorbachen, excuse me. Thorbachen up ahead across the 30. Probably one of the best returns for Williston tonight. We did have a late block. And, yeah, a flag's going to be thrown on that play. Jackson Tamez, I think, blocked someone late, and that might be a personal foul against Williston. So, on a good return, another tough penalty to take for Williston. Those are those mistakes that will kill you. Those, those mistakes you really can't have as a coach, uh, regardless of, of the talent you have out there and how things are going. You just can't have the mental side of things unravel. That's when, um, you know, as a coach, you, I think, really get upset with, with uh, the effort your, your guys are playing with. You want to play well for your opponent. You want to play well for your team. And sometimes you get a little caught up in a block. And sure enough, you just go a little too far. So that brings the ball back. Inside the 20, now down to the 16. So take off that good run by Williston. Under five to go here in the third quarter, moving along in the second half. Alex Bloom. We're going to keep the offense on the field here on first. Handing it off. Thorbachen up ahead. Maybe a gain of one. Excuse me. Thompson again. It's hard to see that four and one with the Williston. Yeah, making it, make it tricky a little bit. Yeah, so not blaming anyone. But my eyes are deceiving me a little bit. Give credit to the, the Minot uniforms. You know, they the black uniform, the, the gold really pops. Yes. I'll tell you, when we're up here at Dwayne Carlson, we were really far back from this yes. field. I feel like it's the furthest back we are <laughs> in any of the games we called. Alex Bloom in the shotgun again. Taking it himself up to the left side. Good gain there. Nearly first down yardage in this. He does have enough for a first down. A good keeper by Alex Bloom on the option. That's what I was saying coming out of halftime. Get Alex Bloom on the move. Bloom does have nearly 200 yards rushing and three touchdowns. He does run it quite a bit and has some good uh, good stats on the year. So he hasn't had a chance to really show off the legs at all in this one. Four wide. And off Thompson. Immediately tackled. 
you know, on the stop. It's Clay Mullins, the sophomore. And Alex Bloom coming in, as we mentioned earlier, the you know, first year he's been the starter. And head coach Mark Kennedy said he's seen nothing but progression from him kind of throughout the season. You know, one of, the, one of those players that uh, just come in and put in the work. You know, he mentioned to me, Bloom did, about, you know, coming in this offseason and, and learning a new offense and, and that being tough. And, you know, he's, he said he, kind of throughout the season he's gotten more comfortable. And you know, as you learn a new offense and become more familiar with it, you're doing less thinking. That's something I think he was do, he kind of hinted that he was doing early of, of, you know, trying to run a new offense and it being robotic. But, you know, ultimately as the season gone along, we saw it in that, that legacy game putting up 33 points where they're able to, to play a little bit more free, a little bit uh, – better in the offense as the season's gone along. Complete pass to Jaden Tanner, well over his head. Bring up third down now. Wilson will have some key pieces coming back next year. Bloom is only a junior. Of course, you have Jaden Tanner on the outside of junior. Storbachen, one of their leading rushers, is only a sophomore. So still plenty of returning players to under Mark Kennedy, as Bloom rolls out right, this time throwing across the field. Jaden Tanner, is he there? He got it, yes! Foul, he was nearly uh, taken away by Caden Kraft, but way to stick with it, Jaden Tanner, and gets into Minot territory the first time Williston's there in tonight. A big throw on the move. Alex Bloom's been able to do that a time or two this season, but, I mean, the, the standout of that play was uh, just Jaden Tanner being able to, to bobble that, the concentration so impressive, and uh, first really big play we've seen of this offense able to, to, to make some plays down the field. Like Caden Kraft had a hand on it, and somehow it just fell right into Jaden Tanner's hand. And, yeah, Williston now in business here in the third quarter. Inside Minot territory, their first play in Minot territory. Roll again, pass, incomplete. That one intended for Gabriel Vernon, his first target. And Caden Henderson being around the ball. Contact kind of dislodging that one. Forty-nine nothing. Minot leading. Wilson showing some life here on this offensive drive. A second and ten under a minute to go here in the third. Bloom in the pistol. Steps back, pressure, going to his left, throws it to the sideline and incomplete. Just about to throw it away. Incomplete will bring up third down. It's Owen Cook on the target there. Final seconds of this third quarter. Wonder if Wilson's going to. They have the time if they want to take the quarter. Play clock just a few seconds longer than the game clock in this quarter. Just a two-second difference, and Williston looks like they will run the quarter out.
Welcome back here in Minot. You didn't miss anything after that break. It was 49 nothing. The clock ran out to the end of the third, and now we have one more quarter of football here in the Magic City, 49 nothing. But Williston in a pretty good spot here in third and 10 as they are in Minot territory after the big completion to Jaden Tanner. Bloom back the pass in the first pick, and he is immediately met by a bunch of Minot magicians. Hunter King will credit him on the sack there. And a big-time loss on the third down. Flat pressure right away. It's so tough to handle when you're blooming. you got three guys you know, charging at you. There's not much you can do, but just kind of lay down and take the sack, and you know, the Coyotes listen to punt. So what was a good start to that drive will end in another Williston punt. Some positives there, but probably maybe a top play of the week, honestly, with Jaden Tanner's catch. Little rugby style punt up ahead. Who knows where it's going to touch? But now rolls down inside the ten. A pretty decent putt, honestly, from Aiden Sanders. So why not backed up inside the ten yard line? Had that almost happened on that first punt uh, way back in the first quarter, where it was off a of Minot uh, blocker, almost recovered for uh, Williston fumble recovery, but instead it's going to be a, a nice punt now inside the ten. So much coming up tonight on the Friday Night Frenzy, including a recap of this one. Of course, a lot of the big games, playoff implications, we have it all covered for you tonight, including some state soccer results potentially as well. There already no legacies into the championship. Last I saw, Shanley was leading Jamestown 1-0 in the second half of that one. But yeah, we'll have a recap of that tonight on the Friday Night Frenzy at 10 o'clock on KX. So it's a new quarterback in for Minot. We go deep into the roster here. Tegan Schindler, the sophomore in at QB. And on the carry was Blake Anderson, the sophomore as well. So some underclassmen getting some action here. We did have a holding penalty on Minot on that play, but got a lot of new fresh faces on the field. Yeah, and you know, a lot of good preview maybe of what's what's to come with this Minot program and you know I can remember, remember being a player get my very first varsity action in a, a playoff game we were you know 40 points behind and but it was still you still remember those moments you know getting on on the field and, and getting those varsity reps I uh, again so so important for for any young player a little handoff here it's to Anderson out to the right side pretty good gain for the sophomore To about the 18-yard line, so bring up second and two. Better shot getting anyone in for playing time here tonight. Feel good about this, and then a quick turnaround ahead against West Fargo next week. And then certainly the playoff. Schindler this time taking it up the middle. A nice little scamper for the quarterback. And across for a first down, it looks like, and move the chains for Egan Schindler. You know, stacking, you talk about like stacking the classes and stacking the, the development and just kind of building a program. You know, Chauncey Hendershot mentioned to me this week, kind of the, the class of 2022, they really established the work ethic of this program and, and what it takes to, to kind of build, build a winner in the WDA. In 2023, that class kind of brought some of the results on the field, of course, winning the WDA getting back to the playoffs, and then, you know, this this class is, has kind of continued that, some of those same, same things, the, that work ethic, obviously the results on the field, and trying to, of course, have more results in uh, just going off the regular season and, and what we're seeing on the field. You know, this is, seems to be a, a continually progressing Minot team. Caden Billion on the carry there, the junior. Another name I have to go find on the roster, but a good carry, two gain, gain of two. The Schindler operates the offense here. Forty-nine, nothing, Minot. Well on their way to a WDA championship. The handoff to Philly on again. 
Call it third and five left for Minot. Bismarck leading by two touchdowns, but now 35-21. The big shocker of the scoreboard right now that we are checking. Man in leading by one right now over Fargo Stanley. An upset bid potential for the Braves. What a big win that could be. A team that was beat by Shanley in the semifinals a year ago. That would be some nice revenge going into possible postseason play for the Braves. Schindler, swing out, the incomplete off the hands of Mason Eichhorn. I mean, regardless of the result, those Mandan players showing that that's a, a game that's been kind of circled on their calendars for sure. Of, uh, you know, when it, knowing the, the team who kind of ended their season, uh, when they get to play them again, and obviously uh, that'd be a, a big upset and a, a big result to look for. I think Mandan's been overlooked a little bit this year. They played pretty decently against a lot of good teams, and uh, we did have a penalty on the play. It might have been an illegal shift of some sort. No, it was declined, actually. It was a penalty that was declined that will bring a fourth down, so it was on the Magi. And why not? We'll punt for the first time tonight, I believe. My record serves me correct. And if you remember our, our football previews, I believe I picked Mandan to win the Dakota Bowl. So. Still a possibility. Never know. You never, never know. know. We, we saw what Century did last year yep. as the punt rolls down to about the 43-yard line. That's where Williston will set up. I did pick Manon to go to the Go to Bowl as well, but I don't know. This Minot team might have changed my mind. Yeah, if, if I could go back and, and change those those predictions, I, I may have. 49 nothing, 7, 25 to go in this one. Here in the Magic City, chilling in the air. Wonderful night of football. A nice October evening. Enjoying it under the lights. New quarterback in for Williston. It's Eddie Medina, who's now playing quarterback. Listed as a receiver in TB. Would have been sort of a wildcat situation. Is It looks like he's going to play a quarterback straight up as he talks to head coach Mark Kennedy and now walks back out on the field. Medina, a junior. Another one of these players, presumably coming back next year. You know, I, I, I talked to Alex Bloom about that this year. Of you know, what's it going to take to kind of build this program up to to where you you want to be, to where you're competing. And you know, he, he mentioned just you know, off season work is, is a big thing in in any in football, especially. I mean, if you don't have a, a strength and conditioning program or at least something in the off season. You know, you're you're kind of behind the sticks and behind the competition because that's that's where that's where Minot I think has really succeeded their emphasis on their their strength uh, strength program the, the Magi Muscle and building that up and and just all all of that outside work and participating in other sports certainly uh, but you know that's really I think how you build up build up a program is is that work in the off season and, and that commitment to being being your best and putting your best effort out on the field. They're in a long snap over Medina, Medina's head. He's going to scramble with it, but nothing doing there. Give the sack. Noah Bledsoe in on the sack. Or Minot. Another fourth and long. Another big-time sack on third down for this Magi second unit. We're getting in on this action tonight. Why not? Getting a lot of good reps from basically everyone on the roster tonight. It's a good team-building win, and everyone gets to go home happy saying they did something in this game. And a snap over the punter's head again. This time, met at the line. Are we going to get another safety? No, they're going to say he was on the one. Aiden Sander, the punter, that was tackled at the one, and so it looks like it's first and goal for Minot. Another tough snap on the punting unit there. That's just obviously something you, you, you can't have. And I remember me, me being a center, I was always told you, you can't miss high. That's, that's the big one of, of missing high, and you really give your, your punter no chance. And uh, another, obviously, the, the best field position of the night now for Minot. Let's see if somebody gets their first touchdown of the year on this unit. 
As Minot will set up first and goal, Egan Schindler in the shotgun looking back. It's an alignment, I think. Here he comes. John Small in the backfield. He's had some good work today. Single back formation, Schindler. Turns around, hands it off. Sean Small up the middle. Is he in? He is. Touchdown. Sean Small in there. So both small guys, both the small guys coming in. Jadrian Small with the score, and then Sean Small coming in. I so. see that, you know, for, for a couple seniors, and he, he is fired up for sure. You know, always something you can you can remember your your first touchdown as a as a high school player. Like that's, you know, something you, you just you can't ever take away from the kid. Both seniors, both getting game action here and both making a mark on this game. Kellen Burke, who maybe one of the big highlights of the game was his 42-yard field goal. Yeah. Looking at another extra point, up and away, good to go, 56 nothing. Minot with the lead. As the clock ticks down here, as we approach our final week, of course, some big games next week. Looking ahead, I mean, I know the Bismarck Century rivalry always brings out the best between those teams, despite any sort of records. And it's been crazy to see how much Bismarck has flipped around the, the program this year. Being winless, we were calling their game last year. And uh, they put up a pretty good fight against this Minot squad, but of course they were laying down the foundation to have another good year, and it looks like they could host another playoff game. Mark Gibson has that crew rolling right now, but do not forget about what Ron Wiggenbach did last year with his team, eight seed, all the way to the Dakota Bowl to play, take on Shanley. What a run through the playoffs. So anybody can win it, really, at this point here in AAA. Taking the kickoff up ahead. Like Thompson on the return, Dominic Thompson. And Minot, or Williston, excuse me, will set up on offense. Four nineteen to go here at Big Dwayne Carlson Stadium. Celebration tonight for the Magi. A coronation of sorts for the top team out of the West, at least record-wise. Handoff. Walker Michael to carry. And of course, if you're if you're a coach, you you, I, you wouldn't want. Anyone talking about WDA title, all that stuff, you, you'd want to, to take the, you know, one game at a time mentality. That's something you hear from, from a lot of teams. But it, it feels like last week was kind of the, the WDA regular season title and the, the, the weather, of course, kind of playing a, a part in that, how that game played out. Uh, but a hard-fought win for, for Minot in that game in Bismarck and then, you know, kind of able to reap the rewards tonight in taking care of business. Second down, Medina handing it off. Michael up ahead again. Nothing doing on the third, like a third and long. Shanley now up on Mandan for the first time tonight, 34-7. to That in the third quarter, so we'll see if Mandan can bounce back. They've been up this whole game. With four, uh, 11 left in the fourth quarter, Bismarck up 35-29. to We've been keeping an eye on both of those games in relation to AAA playoff QRF possibilities. So a lot still on the line. We will have a full recap of that tonight on the Friday Night Frenzy. Of course, on all levels of football, a lot on the line. A lot of playoff permutation, to say the least. Myself and Tristan and Ryan Blank will be in studio. Big time pressure and sacked. And the ball is loose. They're going to say Medina was down. Harassed by that Minot defensive line. Been like that all night for Minot as they've gotten a lot of pressure in on the quarterback position. Good play by Carter Larson 
coming up with the sack and forcing another fourth down. A fourth down and punting it away and eventually kneel down time for Minot as they look to get out of here with a victory, their seventh of the season. Snap to the punter, away, and across the 50 and a nice roll down to the 38-yard line. The 152 to go in this one. Went all but over here. What a quite an impressive in performance for the Minot Magicians. John C. Hedershot giving his final instructions to his offense. He has the headset off. Got to be pumped up with his performance of his team tonight. Egan Schindler looks to finish it off. Looks to be in victory formation. And the knee. And take a couple more times for that to work. But this game will hit triple zeros. Schindler waits for the play clock to reach a number where he feels comfortable snapping it. 15 on the play clock as it counts down. Another knee, and one more will do it for Minot. A night of Appreciation for the troops, the black uniforms, the salutes to the service of armed veterans, army veterans and members of the military out uh, all over, and uh, some great gestures from the Minot football team tonight to support our troops as the kneel down is good. And that'll do it. Handshakes. All around between Minot and Williston, the Magi are your WDA football champs for the second year in a row, 56 to nothing the final. We will take a break and we will wrap up the action right after this.
Welcome back to the Magic City. Minot winning 56 to nothing over Williston and can, uh, clinching a WDA championship for the second year in a row. Chauncey Hendershot, as you see, addressing his team. A dominant effort tonight all around for the Magi, a team that is well on their way to hosting a playoff game here in the Magic City in a couple of weeks. They take care of business moving forward against West Fargo. We just want to recap some of the scoring totals. Lucas Beater uh, leading the way for the Magi early in this game. A couple touchdown passes to Logan Conklin uh, that got the scoring started. Of course, Tyson Rosisco with also a touchdown to notch. And then Griffin Broderick also getting on the tally as well. Then some of the second unit, third unit guys coming in. Braden Nelson getting his first touchdown of the year on a nice uh, contested grab in the end zone. And then, of course, Jadrian Small and Sean Small, both with rushing touchdowns tonight, their first of the year. All in all, a good effort. Got to mention Kellen Burke hitting a nice 42-yarder in the chilly, uh, cold sky of Minot here. But what a good, dominant effort from Minot. They look to be in shape moving forward and uh, well on their way to potentially contending here in a triple-A state potential playoff situation. We want to thank you for watching here on the Dakota CW. We'll say good night, and please be sure to tune in to the Friday Night Frenzy on KX News at 10. Thank you for watching.